And for more analysis, earlier I spoke to Professor Patrick Bond from the Vet School of Governance. These are his party. But you're right, they've had major conflicts. The Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, wouldn't support him. Uh, there were plenty of top Republicans who were disgusted by this new president. And whether they can make up and make some sort of unity statement, as Trump did this morning in his acceptance speech, remains to be seen. But who will provide accountability? In my view, it's going to be civil society. There are a lot of oppressed peoples in the U.S., the, the global South. Uh, so now it's the Muslims, it's African Americans, it's women, it's Latinos, uh, it's environmentalists, it's Democrats who want to see more popular input into public policy, not some czar command tax cuts for the rich. That's what mm. we can expect. So I think the challenge for South Africans is maybe to think back to the apartheid era when we saw those same people in unity with black South Africans, with the liberation movements, with civil society, demanding an end to apartheid using sanctions. We saw similar solidarity between people demanding free AIDS medicines. Do you remember in the early 2000s when they cost $10,000 a year and in the US activists fought to prevent um, the US government, George mm. W. Bush. I mean, during his campaign trail, he was saying, make America great again. But then that sounds like he's going to divide the nation. Oh, yes. And I think that division will help us identify those potentials for solidarity that in the past have worked very well. His strategy for making America great is largely economic. He doesn't have as explicitly a militarist perspective as did Hillary Clinton, who threatened a, uh, an air war in Syria with Russia. And he's friendlier to Vladimir Putin, as we know. But I think um, it's where the economic localization, where he says we're going to have import tariffs, 35 percent. The problem with his plan is tax cuts for the rich mean you won't really see the working class being able to afford the goods that would be produced in the U.S. So to hope that the factories will relocate from China or Mexico back into the United States in those states where he won this morning, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, the Rust Belt is very uh, naive.